Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today's video is going to be talking about the HPA axis. Just as a recap, in case anyone missed the last video in the video series, feel free and check it out. But again, we talked about stage one, stage two, and stage three adrenal testing. You can see stage one, as a quick recap, we have high amounts of cortisol. Stage two, we're somewhere in the middle, but we're starting to have rhythm disturbances. You can see low cortisol in the afternoon. And then with stage three, we're starting to flatline. You can see the patients, the X, cortisol is beneath 23 units. So stage one, stage two, stage three gives you a good idea of what's happening with the adrenals. Now, let's connect the dots today. We're talking about the HPA or the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. So all this stuff's pretty confusing. Let's just clear it all out. So essentially, we have our brain talking to our adrenals. That's our hypothalamus and pituitary. And we have our brain talking to our thyroid. And that's our essentially our brain talking to our thyroids, our HPT axis over here is our HPA axis. And you can see the various feedback loops just like so. And these feedback loops are signified by a thermostat. So imagine your house set at 70 degrees. If it gets too hot, well, the AC kicks on. If it gets too cold, the heat kicks on. So typically, our body's designed to deal with stress. Think of stress as like heat. If it gets really stressful, that's like our body pumping out a whole bunch of cortisol. And again, our adrenals also pump out sex hormones. And if it's also getting hot, our body's going to be pumping out thyroid hormone. And again, when our body gets too stressed, and you can see the connection here, how our adrenals are connected to our thyroid, this connection really isn't addressed too much in the functional medicine world, or at least in the conventional medicine world, right? Typically, thyroid's only addressed by giving Synthroid, and adrenals are only looked at unless you have Cushing's or Addison's disease. Other than that, you're just told it's all in your head or it's just aging, which is not the case. But again, when we have stress, and these stressors can be hormones, they can be blood sugar issues, chronic infections, uh, pain, stress, toxins, etc. All of these things stress the thermostats in our body, right? Again, if you stress the thermostat too much, it's going to break. And what that means in regards to your brain and your adrenals and your brain and your thyroid is the brain and the adrenals can't talk as well. They can't, they can't adapt. The brain and the thyroid can't talk or adapt as well. So again, what you're going to see is HPA or HPT dysfunction. This communication breaks. The stress becomes activated. That breaks the feedback loops, and we're going to see less sex hormones. Our body's breaking down faster. We're not repairing. We start making reverse T3, which are like blanks that go in the gun. So instead of firing off real bullets of energy, we start to have fake ones in there. So again, we want to really address this. And again, these stressors have to be addressed because our body is designed to adapt to stress. And if the stress is still present, we're not going to be able to go. It's going to be like driving a car with the e-brake on. We'll be going nowhere fast. So our goal is to remove those stressors so we bring these feedback loops back on track. And again, the scientific literature is starting to catch up with this. They're finding cortisol and obesity, strong connections with that. What they're finding is using salivary cortisol testing, they're finding problems of high and low secretions of cortisol. And again, they're finding this HPA axis stress, um, again, seems to be correlated with environmental stress. So if we go back here, all of these stress here, what the scientific literature is finally starting to say that we knew back in the 50s and 60s with Hans Selye's research was that this is causing HPA axis dysfunction, broken thermostat essentially. And this actually affects our gut because we need healthy levels of cortisol to make our gut lining known as IgA. And you can think of IgA as like the protective membrane barrier that lines our gut. It protects us from various infections. It's our mucosal barrier that lines our intestinal tract. It lines our nasal cavity. And if you're a female, vaginal or urinary cavities. And it helps protect you from various critters. And when we're stressed, when cortisol goes too high, we're actually going to burn up our IgA. And if our cortisol goes too low, then we can't build our IgA because we actually need some cortisol to make IgA. So it's kind of like that Goldilocks effect. Not too hot, not too cold, not too high, not too low, if you will. So our goal is to get the adrenals fixed. And we can do that a couple different ways. We'll talk about some options here in a minute. But that will allow us to bring the IgA levels back on track. And this is important. This is what provides a barrier from us, uh, from us in the outside world. And in case you didn't know, your intestinal tract is actually considered on the out. It's considered to be part of the outside of your body. It's kind of weird. It takes your head, uh, kind of really twists with your head a little bit. But it, you know, the inside part of your intestinal tract is considered to be the outside part of your body. 
So again, let's go over a couple things here. So we have our hormone building block. So in our last video, we talked about the whole adrenal hormone cascade. All hormones come from cholesterol. When we're stressed, again, our body creates more cortisol because we're hardwired to deal with the stress of now versus the healing of tomorrow. So stress always goes up. And our goal is to essentially to remove the stressors so we can start flipping the balance back into effect, having more rebuilding hormones, right? Think of your hormones as either becoming a uh, fire hose to put out the fire or they become carpenters to build the house back up. So we want, you know, more carpenters and less fire hose, if you will. So what happens in your body here as we progress into stage one, stage two, stage three adrenal fatigue? Well, what's happening is not, not necessarily gland fatigue. There may be some of that. The research doesn't quite substantiate that. But what we're really seeing is this HPA, HPT access dysfunction, the brain talking to our adrenals, the brain talking to our thyroids, and we start to have more disconnect. And as that disconnect occurs, we start seeing fluctuations in hormones. So in stage one, we start seeing higher amounts of cortisol, and it eventually progresses downwards. So we have energy issues, immune issues, um, inability to regulate inflammation down in the stage three levels. And again, over here, you know, we're going to have something like Addison's disease up here off the table, higher than the PowerPoint can even go. We're going to have Cushing's disease, which is high amounts of cortisol. And then we also have autoimmune conditions where we're destroying the gland too, but that's we're not going to really go into that here. So we have cortisol going high and then going low. We have pregnenolone, again, starting normal but dropping out. And we have DHEA kind of slowly withering down as well. Now, we need these hormones to provide building blocks like the last slide showed. The raw materials kind of where all these, these guys essentially come from. They all come from cholesterol and they're building blocks to help make our hormones. Pregnenolone can become all of our hormones. DHEA primarily becomes the anabolic where cortisol becomes the these stress hormones. And there's a couple things we can do. We can even use um, phosphorylated compounds such as phosphorylated serine to help with high cortisol levels. We can use um, glandulars or we can even use um, cortisol products to help support cortisol or even licorice to help support cortisol levels. We can even use vitamin C. We can use various adaptogenic herbs, whether it's eleuthero or ginseng or ashwagandha or rhodiola or holy basil. These are all adaptogenic herbs that can help with the HPA access communication. We can use pregnenolone, we can use DHEA. And again, how we dose these is gonna be according to the lab test. I don't recommend anyone taking these on your own unless you're taking vitamin C or maybe some adaptogenic support. Everything else I strongly recommend you get tested because you don't want to take something that's gonna disrupt your natural rhythm. If you already have low cortisol, you don't want to be taking Seraphos. That'll make the problem worse. If your cortisol is high, you don't want to be taking support that's going to make it higher. And again, we want to be able to figure out exactly where your hormone levels are at so we can dose you accordingly. And I'm a big fan of using sublingual support because it guarantees that we're going to get it into your bloodstream and bypass typically an irritated or inflamed gut because most people with adrenal fatigue are going to have gut issues, and that's going to compromise absorption. So we want to make sure we get you dialed in. And there are obviously other things that are involved here, getting to the root cause of infections, various detoxification, potentially thyroid hormone issues. So this is just one part of the spectrum, but definitely get looked at and assessed so I can help you create a customized protocol for your um, hormonal issues. And again, you can see when cortisol, the DHEA is off, when cortisol is high, so cortisol is our stress hormone, DHEA is our anabolic hormone. When we're breaking down faster than we're building up, you're going to see problems with blood sugar, problems with inflammation, detox, fat and protein breakdown, obviously our hormone issues, as well as neuronal health because cortisol can actually break up our hippocampus, which is a area of the brain um, that's helpful and important for learning. So in summary, again, there's lots of things that we can do to help get the cortisol levels back on track, to get the, the rhythm back on track. It's not just the levels, it's the rhythm. The rhythm is a strong sign of dysfunction. So again, getting assessed so we can get you on the right program, making the diet and lifestyle changes, healthy diet, nutrient-dense, anti-inflammatory, low in toxins, dialing in all the, the stress reduction, sleep, exercise, all of that's important, and getting a prescribe the adrenal program is specific to your lab test is going to be the next best step to accelerate your healing so you can get back to feeling great faster. Again, check below 
for more great um, video series that I've done. Check the last video in this series. And again, if you need help, check below as well to figure out a way to get in touch with me. Again, this is Dr. Justin signing off.